Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial. So today what I'm going to be showing you is how you can create a custom file select button that will mimic the behavior of a native file input element but with custom styling. So I'll show you how you can do this. So it supports one or multiple file selection and also how you can take this a bit further and add a file list. So if a user select some files, the file names and size of each file selected is displayed. So the reason and it's important to create a custom file input button is that the native file input element, it's very hard to style and customize. So I'm not attempting to style it here, but let's see what happens when I try applying the style for this upload button to the file input element. So I'll take the ID of the file input element and in CSS, apply the same styling to the element as is applied to the button. So it hasn't actually styled the button. So you might think, well, try styling a button element inside of the file input. But that won't select anything and that won't work either. So what I'm going to do to make the file input consistent with the upload button is set the display of the input to none and then simulate a click on the file input element via a new button. So first of all, I'll set the file input display to none. So I'll get rid of the button there because that was just for demonstration purposes. And in the HTML, I'll create a new button, which I'll give an ID of file select button. And then back in the CSS, apply the styling of the upload button also to the file select button. So if we take a look at the result on the page, we now have a button that looks just like the upload button. And I'll add some text in that. Now at the moment, this button, it's not doing anything because it's just an element in the DOM that isn't linked to anything else in any way. So what I'm going to do is in JavaScript, select the file input element and also the file select button and trigger a click on the file input element when a user clicks on the file select button. So first I'll select the file select button and I'll do that by its ID and store a reference to that. And also the file input element by the same method. So what we want to do here is to listen out or a click on the file select button. So you can do that by adding an event listener to the element, listening out or a click. And when that occurs, this handler function in the second argument position will run. And what we want to do inside here is simulate a click on the file input element that will trigger a user to be able to select a file locally. And you can do that by calling the click method on the file input element. So if we take a look at what happens now when we click on the file select button, we're able to select a file locally, but nothing changes in the UI on file selection. So with the native file input element, Usually there would be some text, the right hand side of the button displaying the name of the selected file. So to get that here, I'm going to create a span element on the right hand side of the file select button. So the text is pretty close to the button. So in CSS, I'm going to add some left hand margin to the span, so I'll select it 
as the span immediately following the button and I'll give it a left hand side margin of 10 pixels. So the spacing is better now and what I want to do next is to update the text so that every time a file is chosen the file name will appear here. So we can do that in JavaScript by listening out for a new file selection on the file input element. So the event you want to listen out for is a change event. So when this occurs, we want to update the span. So I haven't selected the span in JavaScript yet, but I can get to it by traversing the DOM from the file select button to its next element sibling. And I want to set the text inside of the span to be the file name of a file that a user has selected. So I can get to the input element via the event object. And the input element is going to be the target because the event is occurring on the input element. And the files that a user has selected are on a list on the files property. And if it's a single file, then it's going to be at index position zero and the property on the file to get its name is name. Now it's also possible for the change event to occur with no file selected. If the user opens the file select dialog and cancels it before selecting a file, then the change event will occur with no files on the files list. So to test if this is the case, we can check the length of the files list. So the default behavior for the input element is for this to cause the files list to be cleared. So I'll update the span to say that no file was chosen and exit out the function. So none of the code subsequently runs. So if I select a file, as expected, the span text is updating with the name of the currently selected file. And if I cancel out, the span text returns to no file chosen. Now let's modify this so the user can select multiple files. So the first thing that I'm going to do is to allow the file input to accept multiple files by adding the multiple attribute and I'll set the text of the button so it's clear to the user that they can select multiple files and in JavaScript I need to now handle the possibility of a user selecting multiple files so I'm going to check if there's just one file on there, because it's also possible still that user just selects a single file. So in that case, just going to do exactly the same as before. But if there's multiple files, then consistent with the native file input element, I'm going to update the text in the span to show how many files have been selected. So I'll create a string literal here with backticks that allows me to insert JavaScript values into the string. So I'm going to so the value of the string is going to be a dynamic value of the number of files that have been selected, followed by files selected as static text. So if I select a single file, we're still getting the single file name. If I select multiple files, it's displaying the number that have been selected. Now I'll show you how you can add a file list for the selected files. So I'll create a div underneath all of the buttons. 
So the list of files that have been selected will be displayed inside this div. So inside here, I'll create two spans. The first one will just have some fixed text. And into the second one, I'll insert the list itself. Now, I don't want the spans to appear side by side, but in the right row. So what I'm going to do is in the CSS, select both of the spans inside the selected files container and set their display to block. So now the text in the spans should appear one after the other. So that's working as expected. And you can see that there's some styling on the div. So that's because I created a corresponding style class in CSS before this tutorial with some basic styling. Now in JavaScript, we want to create the file list to append in the second span. So the first thing I'm going to do is to select that span. So I'll do that by its class name, which was selected files. Now I'm going to want to append into that element. So the first thing I'm going to do is to create a new element that is going to be unordered list and I'm going to be appending list items into that. So I'm going to use a for of loop here to loop through all of the files that user has selected and for each file I'm going to create a new list item and setting the text of each list item to a string value. So using backticks, the first value will be the file name followed by an en dash. So on Windows, you can get that by holding down all 0150. The next value will be the file size. And that is in bytes. Now, when each list item is complete, it needs to be appended to the list. And after the loop has finished running, the list should be appended to the selected files span element. Now, because we have a file list, there's no need to display the name of a single file next to the file select button. So instead, we'll just display the number of files selected there. Now there is a change to make to the string. So the number of files might be one or multiple files. If it's just one, we want to display file, otherwise files. So this is a good use case or the ternary operator. So if the length of the files list is one, we want to display file here. Otherwise, we want to display files. So let's check if this is working in the browser now. I'll delete this placeholder text because into there now, the unordered list should be appended. So for a single file that's being displayed with one file selected and for multiple files, but there's a couple of problems. So the first one is that every single file size is being listed in bytes. So that's appropriate for a small file, but for a larger file size, You'd want it displayed in kilobytes or megabytes. Also, the unordered list 
is being appended each time files are selected. So we want to clear previous lists before appending a new one. So we can do both of those in JavaScript. So for the display of the file size, instead of just displaying the file size in bytes, I'll make what's displayed here the return value of a new function that I will create down here. And it will have available inside it the file size that's being passed into it. So the file size is going to be displayed in either bytes, kilobytes, or megabytes. So to make my life a little bit easier here, I'm going to create two variables that store a reference to the number of bytes in a kilobyte and a megabyte. Now, if the file size is less than one kilobyte, then I want to display the file size in bytes. So if value is less than the number of bytes in a kilobyte, then I simply want to display the file size value in bytes. Now, if the file size is more than or equal to one kilobyte and it's less than one megabyte, then the value of the file size should be displayed in kilobytes. So the number of bytes should be divided by the number of bytes in a kilobyte. And I'll call to fixed on the result of that to make sure that there's only one digit after the decimal point. Now, if value is greater than a megabyte, then file size should be displayed in megabytes. So the value that's returned by this function is now going to be inserted into each list item for the file size. So let's test this in the browser now. I'll select a range of files. So now the file size is displayed in an appropriate unit given the size of each file. But we still have this problem with previous lists not being removed. So to fix that, before we create a new list, we can loop through the selected file span. So if there's a first child for the selected file span, it means that a list still exists on the selected files element. So if that's the case, we can remove the list with remove child and we want to remove the first child. You might be wondering why I don't just call remove on the first child. And the reason is that remove child is supported in Internet Explorer, but remove is not. So this just makes the code a bit more compatible with older browsers. So I'll select some of the files and if I do so again the previous list is now being removed before a new one is appended and you might be wondering for the list you can remove the bullet points from the list items by applying the list style none to the list the padding is still quite extreme when you remove that so I set the padding manually to 5px there. So that is it for this tutorial. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please consider hitting the like button down below this video. It helps with the algorithm and others to find the video. And if you'd like to see more content like this from us in the future, don't forget you can subscribe to the channel.